Hey guys, VBad here with another VPlays, and Press2 for Skill has sent me one of his replays. This is the first time I'm kind of doing a play-by-play -play of somebody else's game, or even doing it off of replays. I think I've only done one off of a replay myself, and that's just because it went really well. Uh, you'll see here the first thing that he did is he actually queued the target for the command center. He hit F2 on it in order to get his allies to start putting their gravity of effort into that sector because he knows the command center is important, but he wants to focus his effort on the middle going after this garrison. Now, he manages to get a good pass on that aircraft, getting a kill, and he's almost up to halfway on the cap points here. He's going to put his initial effort on the P228 because that is going to be an aircraft from the enemy team, but then quickly realizes that if he doesn't put some effort in the Hornet, he may be in trouble. But now he sees that there is a heavy inbound on his position, so... Well, the first time I watched this replay, I didn't see that happening. So he's really good at paying attention to the minimap because I probably would have taken a few hits from that heavy. Here, a Yak-30 decides that he's going to head on his aircraft, but Press-2 is totally fine with that because with his four or six 20mm cannons, that's more than enough damage to be able to take on a Yak-30 in the head-on. Now it looks like he is going after this garrison, trying to help out his allies. The idea here most likely being that if he can help his allies take this zone, then they can move on to the command center. What a quick kill on that IL-40 and a very solid pass. Press 2 is already up to probably what, like 4 or 5 kills at this point? Uh, that P228 that he killed was an aircraft he had just damaged earlier as well. He's not putting a lot of effort into each individual aircraft. He's kind of picking and choosing his targets. Here he's going after that I-211 and managed to take him out quite effectively, very quickly in fact. And now he's vectored in on a JU-287. And look at the amount of damage he can get off on that aircraft in such a short period of time. Now he managed to lose his engine there and he took quite a bit of damage in the process, but by overtaking the aircraft he's now no longer in the gun sights of that tail gunner. He's using his altitude and airspeed to try and get some separation from some of the targets that are behind him right now. And now it looks like he's going to double back and he's going to see what he can do against this key 162i or 1. Because it is player controlled. Oh, sorry, that was the 1101. Most likely he was queuing up the 162 since it looked like it might have been a threat for him. Put a little bit of effort into that other heavy. Managed to light it on fire. Right now things look a little bit dire for his team. They are behind on capture zones. And the enemy seems to be swarming the last remaining facility. One of the big problems with the XF-90 is obviously the turn time, but since he was able to light the TU-12 on fire, he was able to finish that target off. There is that Yak-30 again. Managed to take him, and now we've got another specialist in the 1092. Now that he's taken those aircraft out, that's kind of keeping a lot of his allies safe at this point because those aircraft have the ability to intercept and eliminate his teammates fairly effectively. There's another run on that IL-40 again. Wow. Man, he's just racking them up, setting them up and knocking them down. And his accuracy is so good. He's very focused and he must know exactly where to put that marker. He was on fire there for a half second. He's managed to pick up the McGuire medal the flying fighter badge and he's also gotten grade 2 in this aircraft he's moving in on this 287 which I would question this decision just based on the hit points he has left but I guess he's staying to the edge of his firing arc enough that he didn't take any damage but that was a really risky move because the hit points he has left it could have been the last thing that he did now, I can't really see the perspective from directly from his point of view because of the replay system. Um, 
but it seems like that was probably a hairy endeavor right there and but it's kind of a worthwhile effort because if you take a look at what you see on the map here at that time he really couldn't afford to lose this zone so it was worth the effort to go after that aircraft because you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket already with the current configuration of the capture zones again hero the sky badge grade one he's already kicked it up to this point we're looking at 19,000 personal points over 375 capture points and 15 aerial targets destroyed i'm willing to bet that we're going to see an ace pop up here soon just based on the numbers because that means he only has five left to get and look how Look how far along we are in the match. We're like at about halfway. He just picked up Flying Shield, which is what you get for killing a lot of ground pounders and bombers. So believe those have to be enemy team bombers, not just the bot bombers that you see flying in here. That hunter knocked him out, vectored in from underneath, so he probably didn't realize that he was in danger. And then that 262, looks like they're evening the odds right now because they're getting those capture points back they've already got three of the capture zones that yak 30 yet again securing him the ace solid move again another head-on with that same aircraft getting some good damage in on this 1099 b2 but he's going to go ahead and press through because he sees that there's these two specialized fighters right here that he definitely doesn't want to leave to their own devices he's using his speed to try and get away from his ally here but the ally looks like he's turned off and now he's doubling back for another run and that's going to be rob fought rob fought okay and bam nailed it that's there's two specialist uh german fighters at tier 9 and tier 9 tier 9 and tier 10 i think i've made it pretty clear that those are really really good planes they just have very consistent performance with those four 20 millimeter cannons and good maneuverability he took out that il-40 yet again good thing it's a bot i'm not sure i would be able to uh stand being taken out by the same aircraft over three times in the same battle it's like every time he showed up he got knocked out again he sees that his bomber is getting engaged pretty heavily over here and he knows that he's most likely going to need that aircraft so he's trying to help it got some good damage in on that hg3 but there's two other allies coming into this sector not sure what those aircraft are yeah it's a multi-role and a fighter he's on the hunter so the multi-role is gone got it inside the zone that is awesome this match is getting really close right now. If we look at these players left, man, there is not a lot of players left, but at the same time, they are so far behind on capture zones. He's going to have to make a move here. He put some good damage into that airframe, but again, using the speed, he's going to keep pressing through. He's already up to 719 at one point there, which allowed him to be able to get that P228. There's the HG-3, and now he still has two more aircraft below him that look like they're gunning for him. He's going to bring it back down, and there's the player. Ooh, got the Kazuda medal. And now, what's this aircraft? The Yak-30? Yet again, Yak-30 and a near head-on, and there's only one enemy aircraft left. These points spread 770 780 oh man this is coming down to the wire here and it looks like his teammate and the f-86 finished off the last remaining aircraft that was a solid battle 33,000 personal points and an absolute myriad of medals well, let's go back and take a look at some of the screenshots that he's posted for the score and then we'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay we're back in his hangar taking a look at what he has gotten for the score and jeez like this is a non-premium aircraft and he managed to make premium cash off of this battle that that is 
some really good play here. 242,000. Now I do see that it looks like he has a booster that's active in the top left hand corner over here. That's what that uh, red one indicates is typically when you have a booster active. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next screen here. 980 capture points, 28 aircraft destroyed, 9 aircraft, uh, attack aircraft and bombers destroyed. <laughs> Man, what a killer battle for him. And then we can see here clearly at the top of his team. But arguably a really close match. Uh, I, I don't... I'm starting to think Press 2 does this on purpose because I made a comment in one of the videos Postal put up uh, that the battle was really close because there was some moves that I kind of questioned like where press two was going and why he was doing things. But, um, even in a side conversation, press two and I had, you know, he mentioned, you know, sometimes you get good games, sometimes you get bad games, it's really just based on how quickly the battles finish. But when you make your battles this close, that's when you usually post the best scores because if you get air supremacy right off the bat, there isn't enough time to rack up 33,000 personal points. I mean, I've never done that except for in the special events, but he had the time to go do that. He had the time to go shoot 28 aircraft down, and he was very deliberate in all the movements he made with that aircraft. So with that said, I think that Press 2, uh, Press 2, I think you're milking these battles, man. <laughs> and if you are, that's even more impressive because that means that you really know how to read the map and utilize the time available to be able to rack up scores like this. So uh, hats off to you, friend, even if that isn't intentional. Uh, you have posted yet another great battle and coincidentally the exact same map that you posted the uh, that you gave for Postal for his video review of your gameplay. So uh, again, I'm really glad you sent this to me because when you guys send me a good replay, then I don't have to have the pressure on me for getting really good battles. But I don't. I'm still not a big fan of the replay system. I wish they would fix it. If they fixed it. It would make this so much easier for me to be able to use these more often. Uh, I think that it speaks for itself, though, what Press 2 was doing with this airframe. But I would love to be able to see exactly how he's lining up his shots. Because if I, I think if I watch him play enough, I will pick up a little bit of it through osmosis of picking up where the lead is that I should be pulling based on certain situations, certain speeds of my aircraft and the enemy's point of departure from my line. Man, what an awesome battle. Hats off to you, man. And congratulations on another killer victory. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, I will catch you on the next one. I'm marching to the